How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Thursday here on this program, you know what that means? We got AW Dynamite to talk about here today. Did you watch the show last night? Lots of things happened, including new AEW World Tag Team Champions. Which I was not expecting, but it happened. So we'll tell you about that and everything else that happened on the show, including Wardlow versus Orange Cassidy for the TNT title and more. But obviously, after the break, we got to start with what everyone's talking about here today, and that is the PG era of WWE is over. Raw will be moving to TV 14 beginning on Monday. What does this mean? Well, we'll talk about that after the break. Also got updates on Big E. Talk to TMZ Sports about potentially never wrestling again and if he would be if he would be all right with that. So we'll tell you what he said. We got WrestleMania 39 on sale date. If you're ready to go to two nights of WrestleMania next year, well, there's going to be at least one ticket available cuz I'm not going, but you can uh you can check it out. I'll give you the dates. Matt Jackson update from last night. We have got the NXT 2.0 ratings. I'm disappointed I did not get to recap the show yesterday. I'm sure Mike did a fine job. If not, I'll recap it again today. And then, of course, we've got MLW and Forbidden Door documentary and a lot of other stuff. If you want to text us here today, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And yes, if you've been to my Twitter, you know that today is National Nude Day. What a great day for a fully clothed cameo. F4W Online, 35 bucks. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Oh, I'm so delighted today with this story. The PG era of Raw is over. Andrew Zarian of the Matt Men Podcast, our own Andrew Zarian, reported Thursday Raw will be moving from a TV PG rating to TV 14, beginning with next Monday's episode. July 18th, Raw will have a TV 14 rating moving forward on USA. The PG era is over. Raw first moved from TV PG to TV 14 in 1997. The program shifted back to TV-14 in July of 2008. SmackDown has been TV-PG since its first episode on August 26, 1999. TV parental guidelines describe a TV-14 program as one that contains some material that many parents would find unsuitable for children under 14. TV-PG contains material that parents might find unsuitable for younger children. Raw's in Tampa, Florida. Why am I so delighted, you ask? Well, I'm delighted that finally, finally, I'm going to have to stop hearing about this. Because I've heard about this for years. The problem is that this show is TVPG. And I'm sure you're all well aware that my belief is that the problem is not that this show is PG. I think some people think that now that it's TV-14, we're going to go back to the Attitude Era, and it's going to be hot and... Bros, do we honestly think this? I don't know if anyone actually does think this, but it seems like people do. Here's the deal, everybody. Did you watch Raw on Monday night? Did you watch the last... Let's just throw out a couple of things. Did you watch that segment where uh, the Street Profits are out there and the Usos, and they need a referee... And then R Truth comes out, and he has a bunch of bad comedy, and they go back and forth. Would that have been better if somebody would have dropped an S bomb? Would that have made that segment better? When you watch that show, and it's uh, it's ten thirty two, and the main event's going to start, and then there's an entrance, and then another entrance, and then a commercial, and then a video package, and then another entrance, and then a commercial, and then they start the match, and four minutes later there's a commercial. And so in 30 minutes, you get seven minutes. So is the show going to be better if someone, like, swears during that uh, that period? When you watch Dynamite, if you're a fan of Dynamite and you don't like Raw, have you ever heard someone say, you know why I like Dynamite? They swear twice an hour, both hours. 
What are you guys expecting when the show goes TV 14? Do you think that they're going to go back to, like, you know, the women are going to come out and they've got pasties on and, you know, people are going to be cutting themselves left and right and bleeding all over? Is that what you're expecting when they go TV 14? So I'm glad that it's finally going TV 14 so that everyone will see it's going to be basically exactly the same show. Whatever you liked about it is going to be essentially the same. Whatever you didn't like about it is going to be essentially the same. We're not going back to the 90s. It's not going to be ECW. It's going to be the same show. They're just probably going to swear a little bit more. The blood was never an issue of TVPG. Never. And as noted in this, in this, uh, this article here, you know, people romanticize about the Attitude Era and everything. Well, you know, SmackDown, when it was The Rock show, and The Rock was there, and he's talking about Strudel, and he's flipping his hips and doing all that crazy stuff with Hunter and everything. That, that was TVPG. That was a TVPG show. Do you guys remember after the uh, invasion, when the invasion crashed and burned and this whole thing went off the rails and the show just kind of went into the... They lost millions of viewers over the course of like five years. You realize the show was TV 14 at that point. They still lost all those viewers. It still sucked. Because when it's good, it's good because it's good. And when it sucks, it sucks because it sucks. And TV-14 and TVPG has nothing to do with it. I know people go, oh, it's a show for children. Bro, they're not trying to write this show for children. If you think that they're trying to write Raw for children, what's actually happening is you don't understand that they think that you, a 48-year-old person, has the mentality of a child. They're writing the show for children. Or for, for, they're writing for you, not for children. Children aren't watching this show. Children watched the show when Sable was coming out and she had paint on her boobs. That's when kids were watching this show. They don't watch the show now when it's supposedly a kid's show. The show is written like that because they think you have the mentality of a child. You can't figure this out unless you're spoon-fed. This is not a show for children. That's not why it's TVPG. That was all for advertisers. So anyway, it's going to TV14. Uh, maybe like it's going to explode in popularity and do all this crazy stuff and people are going to fall off things and bleed in it. But I would not hold your breath if that's what you're expecting. It's going to be the same show. And you're just going to hear a few more naughty words. Maybe that'll turn this ship around. You can just hear all those naughty words with you every couple of days here on this Don't program. Don't get me started. A couple hey, you know this guy notes? You know what Mushroom Man 674 notes? <laughs> he What's goes, that? He says in 2003, remember everyone's favorite period of SmackDown? It was SmackDown 6, 2003 SmackDown. Yeah. And it was miles better than Raw. Yeah. Yeah, well, SmackDown was the PG show, and Raw was a TV 14 show. Huh, how about that? And who was running SmackDown and doing the creative at that time? Do you remember? I don't know if Paul Heyman was completely doing creative, but he was involved. But he was, you know, one of the point men for that until all that stuff with he and Stephanie and the phone calls and all that stuff. And then he ended up leaving there for a little while. But uh, I I agree with you. I, there's no I, I mimic everything that you say that way, because at the time all of this was going on, you had The Undertaker, you had The Rock, you had Triple H, you had Mick Foley, you had all of these people on the come up. Wrestling was red hot and you had a whole lot of big stars. And look, Jay Cargill coming out and telling Tony to cut the S, I mean, that made the show better. That's exactly. I mean, it, it, in some ways, it like it juxtaposes the show where it's like, was that even needed? And it's part of her deal. And that's why they want to make it part of her deal. So I guess it is. But it's like, OK, great. So Seth drops an S bomb on Cody or they do something like just. Okay, I, we'll see what happens. I'll see what the content is. I'll see how they decide to do things. But if it's just, you know, we're going to be more sexually, you know, suggestive and it's just going to be more cursing for the sake of cursing. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's not going to make the show any better. It's not going to make anything improve. You might get people going, oh, you might get a viral video clip that comes out of it. But if the action isn't any good, if the stories aren't any good, if people aren't really into it, what does it really matter? And it just, this is a marketing thing and they want to, oh, shock and hey, get some eyeballs. I don't know what it is, but I, again, with it being TV 14, if it was TVR, TVMA, whatever the hell it is, it's not going to make it a better product unless what you have on the screen is better, period. Well, now that that's out of the way, we can move on to other important things. So Big E did an interview. And he talked about potentially never returning to the ring. 
because as noted, he uh, he has to wait till the one year mark. They're gonna do more scans and then see how he's doing. So he told TMZ, "I'm doing pretty well. I can live my life pretty normally." My neck is not in a position where I should be ramming my head against other things and movable objects right now. Wrestling doesn't make sense right now. I have to wait for that to ossify, to form bone, to heal. But man, I feel great. I don't have nerve issues, don't have any weakness, don't have any atrophy. I got really lucky because it could have been a lot worse. It's one of those wait and see things. Initially, when I talked to Dr. Maroon, it's been great. He suggested, hey, let's look at this thing in a year. And that's after looking at my last set of scans, so I really can't say. I don't know whether I'll be back in March and 100% or if they'll look at it and say, hey, maybe you should be doing something else with your life. For me right now, March of next year is very far off, so I don't want to spend a lot of time worrying or stressing about it. I'm just kind of living life. been with this company for 13 years. It means a lot of Saturdays and Sundays and Poughkeepsie and Kalamazoo and the most random towns. Now I get to live my life a little bit, see some friends, and enjoy being human. Would he be content if he never wrestled again? Yeah, I think so. My philosophy as a human is learning to be content with whatever life brings you. I'm so grateful to not be in a wheelchair. If I was, I'd just have to adjust to life in a wheelchair. That's how I'm programmed. If I spend hours or days or weeks kind of mourning where I'm at in life, and life not being what I want it to be, that doesn't serve me. Worrying about it, stressing about it only hurts me. It's not useful. I think I'll be at peace with whatever happens. Whether I can wrestle again, I'll be at peace with that. If I can't wrestle again, so be it. My limbs work. I can do this. Could have been very different for me. There's a lot of life to live regardless. So he's uh, going to be helping Triple H. They're doing that uh, talent tryout in Nashville over SummerSlam weekend. And uh, it is now saying it's only for current and recently graduated college athletes. It might be another tryout where they're having some, some indie folks that are allowed to try out. But I figured that no indie guys and gals deal wouldn't last forever. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back at the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervive, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I hope you did a fine job recapping my favorite show yesterday, Mike. I did. I, I loved every second of it as well. Well, that's a lie. But How I, do you but know that? What Are I you asked, calling me a liar? So you didn't watch the Last Legend match? I watched the Last Legend match. You loved it? Okay. I said I loved doing the review. I didn't say I loved the show. Now listen. Listen. All I want is for people to be honest about NXT 2.0. It's all I ask, okay? Listen, that Lash Legend match, Dave said it was a negative star match and maybe the worst match of the year. Hmm. He's probably he's probably right, but I'd have I mean I've seen a lot of bad matches. Okay. With Lash? Actually, yes, with Lash. That match was so horrible, okay? I don't want people trying to tell me that match was good. But you know Nobody what I would. you know what I was kind of uh, I was sort of listen. Everybody was making fun of the end of the show when Cora Jade went to uh, hit Roxanne with the skateboard and the skateboard broke early. As they should. I guess. But it's like... Oh, dude, come on. It's Botchamania wrestled well, nonsense it stuff. it is. But it's like the whole idea was to not hurt anybody. <laughs> like, never have to make... Next time, they'll get like a solid steel skateboard and start beaning people with it because they don't want people to make fun of them. Cause of well, is goes. NXT going full Listen, NXT, uh, TV 14? They can start doing that now. You know what? You know what? <laughs> to be honest with you... I would much rather have been involved as, as a wrestler. I would much rather have been involved with that where the thing broke a little early than poor Brian Pillman Jr. last night, who got his partner choke slammed on top of him and he was supposed to go through a table. And this damn table didn't break. And he just got smashed. And then they're like, oh, we better do it again. And they did it a second time. And smash this guy through the table. You see his neck just go, ah, and his neck is like totally cranked in because his neck like hit the barricade. I'm like, God, whenever people make fun of like, you know, something going wrong when the whole idea was to make sure nobody got hurt, that's not my thing. If you want to make some oh, fun yeah, of something, oh my God. make fun of that Lash Legend match. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my God. All right. That's just my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I would rather the table broke early than poor Brian Pillman Jr. got his ribs smashed. That poor guy. How many ribs does a normal person have? 12? He's got 24 now. <laughs> this poor bloke. Uh, You're supposed heavens. to have a floating rib. He's got like 12 floating ribs, all floating <laughs> around inside because his whole his guts got all smashed up because that table didn't break. Oh, come on. Just because they tried to make something safe, as well they should. They've been gimmicking chairs and things like that for years, even though some of the most noted chair shots of all time coming from the Attitude Era. Uh, there was n there was no pulling and there was no working those chairs. Um, 
it, I, you, yes, you can make fun of that stuff. It could have been a perfect no, you show. You can make people, fun of it. But. You can have, and the whole thing is not even making fun. It's just poking fun at, at what happened there with the skateboard because it was so ridiculous. And it kind of is, if you think about it, Brian, it says something. Wouldn't it say something? You're a worker. You've been trained to do things. Doesn't it say something that... You can have a skateboard. I mean, well, yes, I could hit yes, someone with a skateboard. Yes, you can do damage with him. a skateboard, but the reality is, is she was taking the flat part of the skateboard and was going to hit her in the back. If you really, you shouldn't have to gimmick a skateboard to do that because you should be able to hit somebody in a working way where you make some contact, but you pull it. Well, yes, and you don't actually smash it through their ribs. You're, you're absolutely right. So it's kind right. of ridiculous. You're absolutely right, but. The reason they pre-cut it was they wanted to pretend that she hit her so hard that she broke a skateboard. That was the idea. The skateboard wasn't cut because they didn't want to. It was it was for the visual of, oh, my God, she hit her so hard with that board. It broke and was blown asunder. Well, and give them this. Did you see the edited clip of her getting hit with the skateboard? They no, did, did they as it? good of a job as possible, wow. you know. To actually fix that, so it was. Did they add like eight eighty zooms to? No, they just kind of did a fade where she comes down, and then it looks like it makes contact, and then you see it flying in the air. So they did. It was a little bit of good magic there on the editing part that makes it look a little bit better, and that's how they'll tell their history, which is why we have Botchamania to tell the other history that they would like you to forget. Well, the only other things I want to mention, and we'll go back to the news, is I thought Cora J did a good job as a heel. I think she's a better heel than a baby face. That voice. I am, I am flabbergasted because this has been something that's been in the works for a while. Okay, This is not something where they decided yesterday to do this turn. Their plan, their plan was to have them win the tag team titles and immediately break up the next week. So now, what, are we going to just vacate the titles? Or I don't know, maybe they've got some sort of plan. But And also, uh, since people were asking... Uh, because Keith Lee did that that tweet, and then they won the belts that night. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that the the title change was planned for a long time. This was not that was also not a last minute deal. So anyway, I thought that uh, she's better as a heel, but I don't know what they're gonna do. And the only other thing I want to mention is old Sanga, bro. They got to get this guy in the coconut loop doing matches because he did not have a great match, but he is a great character. And he's a great personality. And you could see that the crowd really likes this guy. So what's missing is his work. And they're not having him work like an Omas. They're having him work like a small guy, even though he's gigantic. And uh, even in there with, you know, Duke Hudson, I was like, man, this was not good. So hopefully he can get some experience because I think they got a, I think they got a hit in that old Sangha. He's got to be able to do a little bit of working. Think he'd be a hit on the main roster when he comes up within six months? Well, the problem is if they book him like this Sangha, where he's a beloved, likable, uh, friendly baby face, yes. You dance, dance around with Shankly. No, that's not going to get him over. No, <laughs> Mike. Well, even with his lady friends? If he if he comes in with the lady friends around him as well, too. Well, that'll help a little bit. Him and Veer, Veer can get upset with him that he's dancing around with the lady friends and all that? So, uh, WrestleMania 39 tickets will go on sale August 12th, Friday, August 12th. It is two nights, April Fool's Day and the day after, 2023. You'll be able to get single and two-day combo tickets. Man, they sell a lot of those singles. And uh, then they'll have a Priority Pass premium package available Friday, July 22nd, which gives fans an opportunity to purchase ticket packages before they go on sale unrivaled access to WWE like never before with immersive VIP experiences. Does that mean they throw you in the water? Premier seating, dedicated stadium entrance. Wow. Actually, bro, if I could get comps for the for the premium stadium entrance, I might go to both days. And I'm not kidding. And uh, premium hospitality offerings. Is that like uh, you get steak? Meet and greets with superstars? I don't need that. That's that's tempting, actually. That dedicated stadium entrance right there, that's enough to make me potentially change my mind about going to WrestleMania both nights. Really? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. That's the main reason I'm not going, dude. I'm not getting in and out of that building two nights in a row. It was an absolute nightmare doing it one time the last time I went. I'm not doing it twice. 
And what's the point of going for one night? You don't even know what's going to be on the show when you buy your tickets. I could get the week card. I could get the card without The Rock. What night's The Rock going to work? Who knows? I Is think, The Rock even going to work? Yeah, we don't even know. But if he does, I think it would be Saturday. That's what makes sense in my head. But have you ever tried to make sense in your head of what WWE is going to do? Never Not a good out. idea. Never Drive yourself out. crazy. Matt Jackson suffered a stinger in the match last night. You can see it. He takes a double suplex from Keith Lee and, and uh, Powerhouse Hobbs. Just a normal vertical suplex. And uh, I think the problem is when you give a normal suplex, you know, the guy that's doing the move, it's like you go up, you go down. With two people, it's like the timing can be a, a tiny little bit off. If one if one of the guys doing the double suplex goes down a split second early, then the timing is weird. And I think that's probably what happened because he, he landed, his neck snapped back, he grabbed his neck, he laid out, talked to the ref, and then from that point forward, it was like, you know... I think he took one big bump, which was uh, Keith Lee fairly gently putting him down on a power bomb when they did their double team power bomb and double foot stomp finish. But other than that, I mean, he took the safest bumps you could take. Everyone stayed away from him. There was even a spot where uh, his brother got, uh, I think it was choke slamming on one guy, and then they choke slammed him onto two guys, so he had two bodies to break his fall. I mean, they were doing everything to make sure this guy was all right. And apparently he felt a lot better after the match, so hopefully he's fine. But that happened. And they still had that match, despite that injury. So that was a great main event. I was thinking yesterday how much I'd like to see one of those other teams have those belts in this match, but I didn't think it was going to happen. But I also didn't hear about Keith Lee's dedication to his brother earlier on yesterday that kind of sealed that deal, <laughs> you know, where it came to, I guess, whatever's going on with him. He dedicated the match, and again, unless it's WWE, you never want to dedicate a match to somebody. You don't want to do this in WWE either. It's just that they do, where you dedicate a match to somebody if you're the baby face, and then you turn around and lose. You know, you've talked about it with Cameron Grimes and NXT. You could do something like that if it's going to immediately lead to a heel turn or it's going to immediately lead into some sort of drama. But even then, it's never really the best idea in the world. People like seeing these types of situations where, you know, the match gets dedicated to somebody or if it's in... In honor of somebody, they want to see that person honored. They want to see the person that's fighting for that person win. We'll talk about uh, Dynamite after this next break. We want to mention that NXT 582,000 down 1.9 percent, 21st on cable, 0.14 rating. So uh, still NXT's second highest rating since January 4th. So a lot more women watching the show. So they may have been interested in that women's championship match in the story of Roxanne. But whatever it was, they liked it. Interesting back. numbers with women over the last couple of weeks with all of these wrestling shows. Yes. Back in a moment to talk uh, Dynamite Observer Live. Show Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dynamite! Open with Wardlow and Orange Cassidy. And uh, it's a very clever match to put him with Orange Cassidy because they got to put in time. But uh, it wasn't a lot of time of Wardlow just selling and selling and selling. Because people don't like to watch Wardlow sell. So, a little comedy early. Chuck and Trent tried to interfere with a chainsaw, I might add. They got sent out. Wardlow beat up Cassidy. Cassidy made a big comeback. And, man, this Orange Cassidy, he hit a beach break, and these fans went nuts like they thought this was the finish. The finish! They thought Orange Cassidy was going to beat Wardlow. But he did not. And, finally, Wardlow grabbed him on a punch attempt, powerbombed him, pinned him, did the fist bump afterwards. This was a very good opening match. I was so curious how they were going to do this yesterday with the, these two guys and their popularity and how is this going to work out? And they, they did it perfectly. It was the perfect ratio of ridiculous comedy and Orange Cassidy style theatrics and still making Wardlow look strong. Nobody lost anything in the fans' eyes after that. Perfect thing. We had uh, clips of Pac defending the All-Atlantic title against Shota Umino. So they're they're showing this stuff from, from elsewhere, which is good. It's better than... If you want to put the whole match on uh, dark, go for it. But I need to see clips of what happened, and they did that on the show for a couple things. Jericho promo hyping up barbed wire everywhere next week and also reiterating that there is a relationship between Ruby Soho and Eddie Kingston. 
and talked about being the first ever Canadian barbed wire match winner when he was 22 years old <laughs> and said that next week it would be the pain maker. Can we get verification on that? Again, is that Eddie in his Kingston? book? Of course he's got it in his book. Are you kidding me? Listen, you can, question, you can question a lot of people about their matches, but not Jericho. He's got every single solitary one written down in a book. I don't know. It wasn't that question, but that'll be a story for another day. I don't remember that being questioned. What are you talking about? I'm sure you didn't. And then he said, you're not a liar, you're a loser. People are questioning his win-loss in his own book that he took records of. Hey, my favorite own book story is still Charles Barkley with his autobiography saying he was misquoted. So, it happens. <laughs> he was misquoted in his autobiography. <laughs> yes. Well, it's called a ghostwriter, bruh. <laughs> Jericho didn't ghostwrite his own book. Well, did Jericho? I mean, didn't uh, I mean, Marvez Alex do Marvez, that book? was not a yeah. ghostwriter. I mean, it was a co-op. <laughs> Two different things, dude. You know nothing about books. I know you've been co-opted Patently a few obvious. times. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> John Moxley versus Takeshita Your pop -up for the books. interim title. My pop-up books. Do I have to mute you so I can get done with this review? They had a great match here. You know who, you know who's in the running? You know who's in the, you want to argue, one of the best wrestlers in the world? This is John Moxley. When's the last time this guy even had an average match? Bro, this guy gets in there with everybody. Everybody. And it's awesome. And granted, Takeshita's awesome and everything, but man... They had such a great match. And, of course, it's a Moxley match, so it's double juice. I don't even know why. Both guys are just bleeding all over the place, hitting all these big moves. And there was a spot in this match where Takeshita hit, like, a, I think it was a frog splash or something off the top. And uh, Moxley kicked out, and he for sure kicked out. This was not an after-three kick out. But it was so close, these fans got mad, and they start booing, and they're angry that the referee screwed up even though he didn't. And then uh, Moxley hits the elbows, and the fans go quiet because they're like, oh, man. They really wanted Takeshita to win. And uh, he got the bulldog choke on, submitted the guy. They all popped and cheered and went crazy and everything like that. But you could tell they wanted Takeshita to get this big win and then do a title match. But Tony, Hey, look, Tony it's a story Khan for another day. Champions. It's a story for another day, but Takeshita is exactly what New Japan is kind of hoping for as they – want to remodel how they do their dojo and remodel how they work with young lions coming up because they wanted a guy to be able to hit a lot quicker. Takeshita is one of those types of examples because he's still only, my God, what is he, barely 25 years old. He's been wrestling for so long now, and he's very good. We had uh, House of Black promo hyping up Brody King versus Darby after the brawl at the autograph signing in Seattle. I had clips of that. Christian Cage promo didn't get as much heat as previous weeks. I think mostly because he was cutting a promo on Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. He really started going off on Griff, and the crowd just, they weren't into it. But he noted that Griff Garrison looked like Jungle Boy, and so he sent Luchasaurus down, who killed uh, Griff Garrison. And then, of course, they did the choke slam through the unbreakable table. And then, get it again! They did it a second time, and it broke. So, uh, I mean... Dave thought this is leading to, uh, and actually, did they announce that? Pillman and, and Griff versus uh, Luchasaurus and Christian? I think, if they did, I think it was after the fact. I yeah. don't know. But, man, after this, it's like, that's a, that's a one-sided match. Daniel Garcia in 2.0 did a promo. Garcia challenged Wheeler Yuta for the Ring of Honor Pure title, Death Before Dishonor. We had a Hangman promo. He was interrupted on his phone. Hmm. And then uh, John Silver, Alex Reynolds show up, and they want to match with House of Black on Rampage, and the match is signed. Claudio Castagnoli, Jake Hager, way over-delivered. And I'm a big fan of Claudio. And uh, Jake Hager, you know, he's not bad worker or anything like that, but you don't, you don't see Jake Hager on the lineup and think we're going to have one of the best matches on Dynamite. But, man, they sure did. They had a great match. This was a Haas match. And uh, it was clever because... They it was it was kind of interesting because they sent down 2.0 to do the distraction, and if you're if you're a, if you're a fan of WWE, like you expect the distraction to lead to Claudio getting beaten, but he didn't. They distracted him twice. He overcame the distraction both times and won. But the issue is that because the fans were expecting that this might lead to the finish, it did actually uh, hurt the heat of this match for a while there when they were running down. I think it would have been better just a one-on-one -on -one, uh, vicious Haas match, mean guy match, 
But I thought this match was really good. This very much over-delivered. Claudio got the win. Hook backstage. Asked if he was going for a championship since he's undefeated. And he just walked off. A lot of debate about what title. They only got 80. But it was brought up perhaps the FTR title. Hmm. Or FTW. FTW title. Not the FTR title. A video of uh, Miyu Yamashita's victory over Thunder Rosa. And then they did a promo backstage. Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter walked up. And uh, Rebel came out with a sandbag. Because of the rumors on the internet. That was weird. I'll put it that way. Was it really weird? It was weird. Why? <laughs> Because who in the world well, in the, in the who in the world wrestling? knows Why what they're talking real? about? People I know what they're the talking show. about. You do. <laughs> Wait a second. But if there's the most... a million people, nine hundred thousand are like, "Why does she have a sandbag?" Brian, are they going to have a sandbag match? Loser has to wrap the sandbag around the feet and throw them in the river, like well, Tony look, D'Angelo did to two dimes. Look, sandbagging is at least a term that's you know j- can be generally used in other places too. I it's... guess, but it's never been talked about that Thunder Rose is a sandbagger. I look, there's a She's lot a of champion. Things, there's a lot of things on that show that you know. Look, remember when you were talking about Orange Cassidy? Look, they they sometimes may rely on the fact that they know their fans know a lot and they stay heavily in tune to things so i think for most of their fans they probably saw that sandbag and and they knew what it was if you're at that show or heavily watching but again you can bring that up later on you know if if you're going to continue on with this if that's going to be part of Britt baker's promo offense on thunder rosa you can actually explain this later on i think at the end of the day it, it doesn't matter like if you didn't know why they had a sandbag it's not like it hurt the show no but it was just like they had a sandbag. Well, after they all these sandbag weeks. <laughs> Thunder Rosa. Well. <laughs> I mean, I laughed, but it was bizarre. <laughs> Serena D beat Anna J. So last Anna J match, I think it was one on the pay per view. I didn't think it was good at all. I didn't think Anna J looked good at all. I thought she just looked lost and confused. Way better, way better in this match. She's still green, but man, Serena D is great. And the match was good enough that they start this match and nobody cares. This crowd is dead silent. And by the end, Anna J she puts her in her rear naked choke once, and uh, Serena Deeb gets out. But man, when she got it on the second time, I think the fans thought, wait a second, she got it on the second time. And Serena's right in the middle of the ring, and she's doing a great job. And they went crazy for that spot. But she got out and uh, submitted her, kept working on her, and then Mercedes Martinez ran down and... They'll be fighting for the women's title at Death Before Dishonor. A big difference between Jade and uh, and uh, Serena Deeb there when it comes to opponent. Then we had the uh, this other one that's just, like, I'm not baffled, but it's just weird. Jade, Stokely, and the baddies are there. And then there's Layla Gray, who is an interim baddie. But none of the baddies won her in the baddies. And then Stokely keeps saying that he's got some plan. It's been two weeks. I've seen no evidence of this plan. He is, like, on thin ice with Jade. He ends up walking off, and then the baddies yell at... uh, I I have no idea where this is going. I, I I can't fit this together for the life of me. I presume they have some sort of idea, but it just... It's weird. You know why it's weird? Because they just put Stokely... They just put Stokely with Jade Cargill, and now there's this weird story... Where they've they've already, they're having problems. I don't like when you put two people together and they're immediately having problems. If you want to have problems between Stokely and Jade, fine. But, like, do it down the road. It seems so early that he's already on thin ice with her. And, you know, I think I don't know if she's signed, but when they started this thing with Layla Gray, she wasn't signed. So it's not like she's under contract and they've got some long-term storyline. She may be signed, she may not. So... It just seems like a week-to-week thing where they're not entirely sure where they're going. Maybe they do. I don't know. But it's weird. And then uh, the main event was the three-way. Swerve Strickland, Keith Lee, Young Bucks, Starks and Hobbs. This match was great. This was a great match. And I think the thing that people are talking about besides uh, Matt getting his stinger is the uh, finish. 
which was uh, Keith Lee pinned. No, Keith Lee hit the big dive on everybody outside. And, man, he did a flip dive, and he made it over the ropes, and he wiped out everybody. And then in the ring, Swerve pinned Starks. So they did not pin the champions. And uh, we'll see where it goes, okay? A third Young Bucks title reign? Well, listen. It is. Hold on. I would not I would not jump at that, okay? Here's the thing, everybody. I Listen, I don't know where they're going, okay? But I do know one thing, 100%. The Young Bucks were never supposed to win the tag team titles. It was supposed to be the Hardys. And then everything went down with Jeff and Matt, and they ended up winning the belts, which they were not supposed to win, okay? So everybody was watching this and going, well, you know, they they took the titles off the Bucks, but, you know, clearly they're going to Bucks and FTR for all. Th- I don't know if they're going to do that because FTR was going to win those belts, but the Young Bucks were never going to win the AEW titles. So the idea that, well, you know, we're going to go to this match that was never the original plan. Tony doesn't do that. So I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but I think that people who are are like certain that the Bucks are going to win the belts back immediately from, you know, uh, swerve in our glory so that they, they can do the, the, all the titles at, at, in a month and a half at all. I don't know if that's going to happen. I wouldn't get my heart set on that one. It might happen, but this has happened before where he's had a plan, something went wrong, and he had to put somebody else in a position but then, since that was never the original plan, that person was taken out of the position, and it was just, it was done. So I don't know if the Bucks are winning the titles back, but I guess we'll see. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Man, the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Any other thoughts on Dynamite, Mike? Not really. It was a good show. It was a good show. The whole Fighter Fest gimmick, I'm not sure... I'm not sure if over two weeks and four shows, you know, I don't, I, I, how they theme shows is, is kind of wacky to me that they were on Cleveland and it's like, you know, beach break and all that sort of stuff. I think sometimes with the names, I don't know, maybe they matter to somebody. I, I don't even know why they are, are making these things like fighter fest. I mean, I could understand with like a video gaming thing taking place at the time, or you're going to theme out the show or something like that. But if you're not going to do that, just. Call it dynamite. I don't really see a need for it, but it doesn't really matter. That's just small potatoes and a marketing thing. Well, yeah, we'll talk more about this tonight with Vinny, Brian and Vinny Show. For video subscribers live at 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern, you can watch live on our video channel, video.f4wonline.com, which is our YouTube channel. And uh, if you don't have the video subscription, the audio will be up afterwards. And we'll talk about NXT 2.0, which I... I sadly did not get to talk about yesterday, but I'll get to talk about it tonight. Fear not. And uh, AW Dynamite as well. And then I may or may not be here tomorrow. Yeah, again, I have an appointment, and I'm not sure if it's going to be done by noon. So, yes, we'll see what happens. It'll... Is it with that doctor that Alexa Bliss was going to? No, it's about a car, to buy no. a car, one of these cars. Did it die on you? Well, no, we, we leased the car, but I don't know if you've been paying attention, but it's hard to get a new car now. And so there's no cars available, and thus we're going to buy the car that we were leasing. <coughs> Gotta have a car, dude. <laughs> How do you think I transport trees? I don't know if you've been paying attention, but it's hard to buy a new car now. I, I can't take trees to Whale Scout events on my motorcycle. Anyway, we're out of time, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.